The headline for today, the top story, as you've already heard teased, yesterday was a difficult day for President Biden. He paid a visit to Democrats on Capitol Hill amid news that Democrats, Christian Cinema, and Joe Manchin had publicly rebuffed the president's plea to do away with the Senate filibuster in the name of voting rights. Here's his response to some questions he got from the press. First of all, you all ask questions about complicated subjects like, can you get this done? I hope we can get this done. The honest to God answer is, I don't know whether we can get this done. Is this mic on? I guess. Anyway. Also breaking yesterday, the Supreme Court ruled on part of Biden's no jab, no job policy. Lots of big news out of D.C. And here to discuss all the breaking news from Washington is Representative Vicki Hartzler, Congresswoman. Welcome back to Washington Watch. Well, it's great to be here, Joseph. Well, it's good to have you. A couple big topics I want to get to with you. First, let's talk about the failure to end the filibuster. Are you surprised that Schumer went as far as he did when Senators Cinema and Manchin had long said that they wouldn't support doing away with the filibuster? Well, I think the left is so powerful and he is beholden to the radical side of his party that he felt uh, that he had to uh, take it to the brink and uh, do everything he can so he can turn around and say to them, hey, I tried. And so he's just laying down a marker that this is uh, what he tried his best. And I'm very grateful for uh, Senator Cinema and Manchin that they held firm. And we may be having some, uh, it looks like we're getting the picture back there a little bit. We may have had a glitch, but such is technology. Now, you, you hinted at this a, a little bit. Um, do you think the failure, and let's remind viewers that the filibuster had to be overthrown, gotten rid of the filibuster in the Senate so that they could pass voting rights legislation without the support of any Republicans. That was the, the goal of getting rid of the filibuster, but they failed in doing so. But the, the far left of the party really wanted that. Do you think it helps the Democrats with their base that they tried and failed, or does it hurt them because they tried and failed? Well, I think it helps them with their base, uh, who is very radical and wants to take over our country. But I think it hurts them with the average voter who sees this as an overreach. You know, 65 percent of Americans want more election safeguards. They don't want less. They don't want a federal takeover of their election process that would nullify voter protection laws in 35 states and codify what they did in California. They don't want taxpayer funded uh, elections and that's what this would have enabled. So I think uh, they may have helped their base but they hurt them in the long run and that's why I believe Republicans are gonna take back the House and the Senate because of radical moves like this. And to clarify some of the concerns about that legislation, it would have mandated that states allow same-day registration, which has all sorts of security issues, and forbid them from requiring voter ID when you vote. So those are some of the provisions of this expansive, essentially, federal takeover of local elections and some of the concerns about them. Now that the Senate has is, is not going to pass this legislation, in part because they couldn't get rid of the filibuster, though they probably didn't have the votes to do it anyway, even, uh, even if it had gone to a vote, is this the end of the road for the election reform, the uh, election takeover legislation? I think so. I, I mean, they've tried everything they can, pulled every trick out of their bag, and, and they failed. And so now they're going to run on this and uh, say, hey, we tried. And they're going to, of course, try to demonize Republicans and, and make it look like we tried to squash uh, voting rights, which in the, the case is really that is not true. There is no discrimination. Everyone has the right to vote. What we did is protect voter election integrity and the rights of states to determine the parameters that they want for voter safeguards. So um, I, I think they will move on to the next topic, but we'll see. And to that point, what do you think is the next topic for President Biden's legislative agenda? 
Well, I think they're going to come back and continue to try to get Build Back Broke uh, bill, and they're going to perhaps break that into smaller pieces and try to pass individual uh, le pieces of legislation. You know, uh, Senator Manchin had earlier on agreed to certain portions of that bill, and that is still very concerning that they could try to continue to pass uh, some of these 150 new socialist government programs individually repackage them. So we'll have to see. I'm sure they're going to keep pushing and keep trying to, uh, you know, make their uh, point and try to, uh, going into the election year, try to uh, make Republicans look bad and try to make themselves look good. Well, on the same day that President Biden lost the election takeover bill in the Senate, the Supreme Court uh, overthrew and, and uh, stopped the implementation of the employer mandate with respect to vaccines. Do you think anyone was surprised by the court's decision there? Well, I was very, very grateful. I wasn't surprised, but, you know, crazier things have happened with some uh, outcomes. But to me, it just seems so unconstitutional that the government would try to force its citizens to undergo a medical procedure in order to have a job. If that isn't a, a government overreach, I don't know what is. No one should have to choose between following a government mandate to undergo a medical procedure that they are concerned about or give up their livelihood. And I am thankful that the court ruled rightly and said, no, that is not the case. But it was concerning. They said they thought Congress had the authority to do that. And I would say they don't. That's why I've introduced a bill uh, to codify that we cannot and OSHA cannot ever do this again. And to make sure Congress goes on the record that we do not support this type of a vaccine mandate for anyone. Now, we've talked about the kind of the one-two punch for the Biden administration yesterday of his election law, as well as the loss at the Supreme Court. What's your sense of the president's standing in Congress right now? It's really been a difficult first year for him. Most of his legislative agenda has not passed. Now, the Supreme Court has, has dealt him several, but in this case, another major blow. What's his standing with Congress? Oh, it's very poor. I mean, it's similar to the uh, American public who view him only 33 percent approval rating. I think even among the Democrat caucus, there's many that see he is weak and he is inept and he's incapable. And I think that will bode well for Republicans this fall in the election and that we will take back both the House and the Senate because the American public have seen this incompetence. They have seen us going from being energy independent to energy dependent again because of his failed policy. They've seen us having a secure border and to going to having an open border with it flowing of, of drugs and, and human trafficking coming across and endangering our security. They've seen us be weakened on the world stage with a debacle in Afghanistan. And they are very, very concerned and ready for a change. They see inflation going through the roof, and they're making um, less money in real dollars than they were a few years ago, yet working harder. So as Republicans and uh, legislation that I have proposed will take us back and fit us back on the right track, and I think we can't get there soon enough. Do you see President Biden's challenges in Congress to be a function of some political failure on his part in negotiations? Or did he simply over, overestimate what he was capable of and what the American public were willing to accept? Well, that was part of it. He's been acting like he had a mandate that the American public wanted all these radical new programs and they wanted a wide open border and they wanted uh, less support for law enforcement. And uh, I think he was wrong. I mean, there was not a mandate uh, we has only a majority in the House by, by four individuals. It's a 50-50 split in the Senate. So the American public just wanted, I think, just some uh, calm, and, but they didn't want these radical policies. So he overreached. But then in the way that he has carried it out, has just showed an incompetence, an ineptness, an inability to even uh, communicate in an effective way. And he's gone back and forth, back and forth with various policies Look at the vaccine mandates. I mean, how many different uh, uh, ideas and opinions and guidance has been put out there? 
Uh, and then they're forcing people to take these vaccines. So American public has lost trust in this presidency and they want a change. They want their lives back again. And sadly, our enemies abroad have also smelled weakness. And that's why we see an emboldening of, of Putin, who is uh, over 100,000 troops on the Ukrainian border. It's why we see Kim Jong-un in North Korea shooting off missiles and pounding his chest. That's why we see China continuing to fly over Taiwan and threaten them, that very important democracy in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, so this is very concerning. You know, Ronald Reagan said, peace through strength. And that's why as a member of the Armed Services Committee, I have been such a leader uh, with my colleagues to rebuild our military. But we cannot show weakness because when our adversaries sense that, then that emboldens them. And then we are all less secure. We're talking to Representative Vicki Hartzler. Representative Hartzler, some good news. The Marine Corps recently announced that they granted their first two religious exemptions from the COVID vaccine mandate in the Department of Defense. Is the, in about 30 seconds, is the, is the, does the Supreme Court's decision have any impact on uh, soldiers who are seeking exemptions? Not directly, but I, I'm hopeful that the Marines and all of the branches of the military will grant more religious exemptions. Up until today, when the Marines issued those two, they had issued zero out of 3,212 requests. Uh, this is not right. We need more of them to stand up and protect our First Amendment uh, freedoms of our service members. Representative Vicki Hartzler, we greatly appreciate your time. There is so much to be covering right now, and you do an excellent job doing it very quickly for all of us. Thanks so much for your time today. Uh, thank you, Joseph.